Okay, so however you've neatened yours, I've just overlocked mine, then that's looking all nice and lovely. The next thing that we're going to do now is take our front waistband and take the pins off there. And do you know what? I've cut two of those and I only needed one of those. That was silly of me, wasn't it? Did anybody else shout at the screen to tell me that I was doing it wrong? I'll save that for another one in case I need it. Okay, so I've got my, my top side marked and what I want you to do now is just run along and just neaten this edge here in order to make that um, ready for attaching. So again, you can either zigzag the edge or you can use your pinking shears. I'm just gonna nip over to the overlocker and use that for mine. But all you're doing is just doing one long edge. That's all you need to do with your right side up. And then once we've neatened off that edge, making sure we've got the right side up, we're going to put right sides together. And if we just fold this in half, the, the waistband piece, and let's just put a pin in to mark that halfway point because then what we can do is go to our trousers. We can push, push your seam allowance to one side, whichever way you prefer. And then I'm just going to recite that pin right in the middle. And then hopefully you should have your waistband should go across here just nicely. Now, we have got to just bear in mind that at once, at some stage, we might want to change these pleats. And if we do, we'll just have a bit of stitching just to undo. But we're going to have a go and see because I think I think we're going to be okay. Where's Bramble? So let's put this on top of Bramble now and see where this is because these should, should now fit to his side seams. And pretty much they do. I mean, we've got the elastic in the back of the others. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this with confidence because I think that they're going to look quite nice especially with that top stitching just down that edge there so I'm going to just go ahead with mine but if you've got any doubts then you can always just tack your waistband on for now and then come back and do that sew it on by machine later just sit over there for a minute Bramble okay but we're going to go for it I'm going to be confident in my choices and I'm going to put actually the waistband side down because that's flat and I want these pleats to be um, positioned nicely in the seam allowance. So if I have the flat piece of fabric for the waistband down, then I'm not going to be worrying about that. The other thing I'm going to do is because we've finished with these tailor's tacks now, because we've done our pleats, I'm just going to take those, those tailor's tacks out so that they're out of the way. So this way I can control what I'm doing. So again, let's sew here with a... Just going to do a scant one centimetre seam allowance. It's going to reverse over the edge. Needle in the work. And just be aware, just as you start to come to your pleats, take it steady over those. Let your machine cope with the bulk of the fabric. And again, we've got the next one there. That's where the centre seam allowance is. And we could have pressed that as well if we'd have wanted to. But this one now, we need to just make sure, just lift up your presser foot if you need to, make sure it gets on the top of it. Because sometimes you can find that when you've got a pleat that's sort of facing towards your presser foot, as you start to sew over this section here, the, um, the fabric starts to unfold for you and we don't want that. So you could always use your awl. Where's my awl gone? So your awl, which is your pointy tool. And you can just use that to help keep everything absolutely down where it should be so remember to take your pins out and then once you're on it you're all fine it's going to come to the end here and then just reverse needle out of the work and we'll cut off our threads and i've got my tailor's tight threads there still we'll take off our starting and stopping threads Threads everywhere. That's what happens when you sew, isn't it? There's everything everywhere. And so this is what we're left with now. We've got our waistband going up over the top there. Our pleats are nicely horizontal, horizontal, vertical. It's just going straight down, so that's all nice and neat. And then we're going to leave. We can take this over to the ironing board. And we want to press that seam allowance up, and we want to press the waistband up as well. So let's just give that a press so that that's all ready. Don't forget to use your press cloth as well because we're onto the, onto the wool, aren't we? And then once this is warmed up, then we can use this down onto the fabric just to press those stitches first, just to set that seam. And then we're then going to fold that seam allowance up 
and use the nose of our iron. And we can just see through the fabric there with the silk organza just to make sure. And you can feel it with your fingers as well where there's a ridge, just to hold that in place. And it folds quite nicely once it's all pressed. Bit more on that side. Okay, so that's all nice. And that's all sitting nicely, happy with that. Okay, there's just one more thing we need to do before we do go on to the back of the trousers, and that is we need to fold over. So where the waistband is at the edge, we've just pressed all of that upwards towards the um, towards the waistband, is now we want to fold the waistband over itself. And if you've got your little um, either zigzagged or your um, overlocked edge, then you want to make sure that the waistband at each side is one and a half centimetres. So just adjust it for that. And then we're going to then pin through the um, waistband. Now, Sarah says to do a stitch in the ditch, which you can do. I'm not a big fan of it, but it's it's something that you can do. But what I think I will probably end up doing is actually just hand stitching this on the back. I just think it's just easier and it doesn't, easier. It is easier. Um, it just takes a little bit longer, that's all. Um, but all I'm gonna do is just pin it on this edge here. So I can feel through from my fingers that the um, overlocked edge is just extending down. I've got my one and a half centimetres at each side. And then what you can do is if you want to stitch in the ditch is you, you stitch in the shadow line between the waistband and the, and the front of the trousers. So you just, where's my all? You're just going to just move that pin. You're just going to stitch so that your stitches are right inside just there. You have to take it slow. Um, because you can easily catch the waistband and then you'll see your stitches on there or you can come too far down here and then you're going to see the stitches further down into your garment and that's why all I'm going to do with mine is I'm just going to turn it over I've pinned it in place anyway I'm just going to fold back the overlock in and then I'm just going to tack well slip stitch the fab the um, overlocked edge just this folded edge that'll fold down and hide the stitches but I'm just going to stitch through there by hand and that will then neaten that off. Let's have a go. It might even just finish off my... Oh, it's not quite. There must be more on my on my reel than I think. So if I just take that stacking thread out and thread my needle up with the same colour thread that I've got on my sewing machine already. It only needs to be single. It's not going to be... T I mean, you might want to use double thread if you're going... If, you're, if a child's going to be dressing and undressing your bramble. I don't think mine is on this one. So then you're just going to take that stitch out. I'm just going to fold that overlocked edge out. I can see the stitch line for the actual waistband itself. Let's do a couple of stitches in place just to anchor that knot. And then just holding that back, I can see where the stitch line is. And I can just take a stitch. It's quite easy sewing because it's not like you can, you've got the back of the waistband and the seam allowance that you're almost tacking into. So it's not a difficult, it's not a difficult sew. You're just trying to keep that, that edge down. And if you do that all the way along, then what you'll find is that when you turn it over on the right side, you've got none of that problem with the stitching at all being able to be seen and that's firmly tied, secured down, so there's no problem at all. And on the inside, there's a couple of little indentations, but not much at all. So depending on how you stitch, um, and I was being quite generous with my stitches, then you're going to be fine and not have any problems. So I'm just going to do that, and then we'll move on to the, um, onto the back pieces. So we'll just get that sorted. So if you want to do the same, and then we'll move on together. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do then is get hold of our back trousers and take our pins out of our pattern and we need to just pay attention to which side we've got together of our fabric so I think we've got right si wrong sides together at the moment just put your pattern away so that you don't lose that you always find it better if you do it as you go along okay so I've got my pin show my right side so I just want to switch these over so that I've got the wrong sides together and then we're going to be sewing with this curved crotch edge just here. So let's put the edge of that together and put a pin in there. And then let's go up to the top here and put a pin in there to hold that together. And then a pin on the curve as well. Just make sure they're all sitting all nicely together. 
then we're just going to do a one centimeter seam allowance all the way down here now if you want to leave your gap for your tail or to leave a lower tail you need to just bear that in mind so wherever you were with your tail before when you would when you were um leaving the notches i said you need probably to need to be about half an inch to an inch maybe do three quarters of an inch lower in order to hit where i've got brambles tail on mine because i did my tail quite low so that it was sort of sitting quite nice and flat when he was sat on on the um table so just bear that in mind because obviously if your tail's higher then you might not be a problem but mine sort of in line with the buttons all the way around um, the back of him but the only thing is that the tail is sewn on um across um, vert um horizontally and your slit in your trousers is vertical so again you've just got to weigh up the pros and cons of that if you've got a round circle tail for flora then it might not be a problem um for your tail or if it's earnest then you might not have a problem but as i say with that one i'm going to choose not to do the um not to do the opening so I'm just going to carry on down. But if not, you could use my red pin trick, you know, where I put a red pin in to say stop stitching here and here um, and leave that open. And then that's what you would need to do. So I'm just going to carry on and do mine all the way down. So let me just get my th threads. That's it. And then I'm going to use a one centimetre seam allowance. Reverse at the start and stop and put my needle in my work so that that stays down and holds everything still for me while I'm moving those pins. So be gentle not to pull on your fabric and if you need to then you can just pivot. Just lift your, leave your needle in the work, lift up your presser foot and change the direction. Not too severe so that it should be okay but it just depends on how you're feeling and the fabric you're using you might not be using the same fabric as me and then I'm going to just reverse at the end as well needle out of the work and let's take off those threads now um, I will now going to um, take this to the to the overlock and I'm going to overlock that seam but you'd need to neaten that seam if you were using um, the tail edge what you could do is you could um, overlock the edges separately first and have them out but then when you've finished if you just give it a press so that it's flat what you can do is from the, if I just show you on this twirl is just open that out so that it's all flat and then what I tend to do is go across for a few stitches needle in the work come down so I'm going across the top of this slit just keep that seam allowance to, to one side and then following that down to the bottom of the slit, needle in the work and pivot again, and then come across. So this is after, after you've neatened your seam allowance. It's going to look messy on, the, on this fabric because it's the wrong colour thread, but you'll be able to see it really clearly, so you'll be able to see what I've done. And then just reverse. And then if you have got little hands just um, trying to get these trousers on and off and a tail through, it just reinforces it. So let me just um, take the darkness and the threads off. So you do that kind of thing. Can you see the dark thread all the way around the edge? And it, it'll, once you've neatened your seam allowances, it just holds the seam allowance to one side. Because you do find that if children are using these um, characters' clothes, as they're pushing it through, you're going to get a lot of fraying on the edge of your seam allowances here. So just doing that just holds them out of the way and just makes it neat for you. But I don't need to do that. So I'm just going to overlock this. So you zigzag your seam allowance on that crotch seam that we've just sewn, um, or overlock it, or use your pinking shears just to neaten that edge uh, and stop it from fraying and then we'll talk about the next step now we've got our our seam in we know which is the right side and the wrong side so we can take our pins out it was telling us that and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to neaten this back edge of the top back edge of the trousers so again whatever your chosen method is you go ahead and neaten that now i'm just going to nip to my overlocker and do that okay so we've just got our trousers neatened on the top edge here I've got my seam allowance pressed to one side and I'm just going to give them a quick press just on that edge using my pressing cloth just to make sure that that's all nice and flat. 
because the next thing that we're going to do now is get some pins and our seam gauge and we need to turn over the waistband by 2.5 centimetres or by one inch. So that's my first inch. So I do like to pin into my cutting um, pressing mat. It does work very well. Let's go down to this edge here and then you can just pop those pins in and it does hold that edge right in nicely in place. Just be careful, there seems to be a little bit of a curve on that back edge. I don't want it to be too, too deep. A little bit less. That's better. Let's come down to this side. Oops, this side here. Everything's jumping around on me today. That's an inch there. And that's an inch at that side there. Okay, so now what we can do is put in any extra pins if you think that you need them, just to keep that all nicely in place for you. And now all we're going to do is use our pressing cloth again, and we're just going to pin that seam in. Can you see how that's all nicely holding those that edge down for me? Just makes it a little bit easier, I think. You can also pin into a fabric um, ironing board cover as well. That's the other thing that you can use. But use your press cloth again. And remember, pay particular attention to where it's thickest on that centre seam. OK. Give it a little blow. Let it just um, cool off because that'll help keep that um, memory in place of that fold. And then you can take your pins out. And there we go, that's what the back of the trousers looking all really nice and smart. And I love how the pleats, or the not the pleats, the stripes all go into the centre there really nicely. Okay, next thing we're going to do now is open out that waistband. I know we've just pressed it, but look, it's given us a lovely little fold memory just in there. And then we're going to take our trousers. And before we do that, we can also just give these a bit of a press too on that waistband just to make sure it's nice and crisp. So while we've got our ironing mat here, we might as well just do that because we turned that over and didn't didn't press it earlier well you might have pressed yours but i hadn't pressed mine and the other thing that we can do now is we can take out those tacking threads that we had as well for those pleats because we finished with those because that front section is all all finished now if you have gone over one with your stitches then just break off the thread at one side and then you should be able to pull through from the other and it should come through. There we go. So it's got a little errant thread there. Let me just take that one off. Okay. So that's all nice and flat. So we've got that all ready now. The other thing I want to do is just trim off. So where I've got a little bit of excess where my waistband just exceeds the side seam of my trousers, I'm just going to take that off so it's flush with the side of my waistband as well, just to make sure that that's all nice and neat. It's only just a slight amount but we'll just neaten up as we go along and then we're going to take the back of our trousers we're going to fold open our folded edge let's put the back of the trousers down I think that's going to be easiest and then you're going to have them right sides together for the trouser front and back but where you've got the folded top edge of your waistband that's going to meet up where the folded ironed folded line is on the top of your waistband so just put that in there with the pin pin head poking out and then your trousers should be the same length all the way down the bottom so let's go down to the hem and let's just put that pin in place at the hem and then we just want to just make sure that these are going to sit on top of each other just nicely a little bit of easing in I've got to do on mine they're not quite the same length, but you do want that that edge to be on the fold edge because that's going to fold over like that eventually. And if you feel like yours isn't going to ease in properly and you need to lose some length, then lose it on the bottom hem edge. Mine going, mine's going in okay-ish, but I might just lose just a small amount. But sometimes as you start to readjust your pins all the way down, it's not so bad. 
Okay, so that's how mine are looking now. So we've got the, the waistband for the front is folded over, the waistband for the back is folded up, and then I've put my waistband for the front up to where the crossover is, where that ironed edge is just there, look. So there's my here's my front, and there's the ironed edge, because eventually we're going to have that over that way, fold, fold it over towards the front when we stitch down, but we've got to put our elastic in first. So let's then have a look at our elastic casing, and we want... We need a 16 centimetre piece of elastic. Let me just get that. Hold on one second. So I've got my 16 centimetre piece of elastic. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold over the waistband first. Let's recite that pin we'd got holding at the top of the waistband just so that it holds all it together. But then I'm going to put one edge of the elastic towards the top of where that pin is. But I'm just going to put a separate pin in just to hold it in place. So if you were reading the instructions, this might have been the bit that confused you. And then we're going to sew all the way down here, but I will reverse stitch over that elastic just to make sure that that's held. Let me do the other side just to show you. So first of all, find your folded edge of your um, front waistband, and then you're going to put that right against the side seam where the folded edge for the back waistband is. And then the first thing I did was just put a pin in there just to hold that into place. Then you're going to travel all the way down your trousers, tra this side seam of your trousers, and you're going to put the raw edges together and put a pin in just to hold that together. My back trouser is slightly longer than my front, but I'm not going to worry too much about that because we can just take that off if we need to. We'll even that up at the end. Okay, so that's like that. Then what you do is, where you've got your folded edge here for the waistband, is you're now going to fold that over so that the overlocked edge of the back waistband sits on top of the overlocked edge of the front waistband. And that meets it perfectly. And then I'm going to recite the pin that was holding it at the top. That's it. And then get your piece of elastic and making sure that it's straight and it's not folded, you're then going to hold that just to the side of the pin holding the top. And we'll put another pin in to hold that in place, just so that we've got it and it doesn't let go when we're starting off. So you'll see that this elastic is forming like a bridge because there's the back of the waistband, but eventually we're going to sew that down and that will, that will cinch in the back of the trousers to make sure that that fits Bramble well. So don't worry about that at the moment. So we've got these two side seams now that we can go down and sew. So let me just get my machine together and we'll do that. Okay, so my machine's all ready, just on a standard 2.2 um, stitch. Just made sure that everything's all sitting nicely. Now, what I would suggest here is because you're starting off with some bulk, is we're going to start off on top of the elastic first and stitch through that and then we'll go backwards and then forwards again and that will make it easier for you. If you try and start right on the very edge of the waistband, you're going to struggle because you're going to have too much bulk for your presser foot to cope with. So that would be my tip. So let's do a one centimetre seam allowance down the side here and I've got my presser foot right on top of the elastic and I've just taken out my pin and I can put my needle in there just to hold it. Then when I'm sure that everything is right and straight, I'm going to take a few stitches forward. So that's got the elastic in place. Now I'm taking out my pin at the back that was holding onto the edge, so that very, very uppermost pin. Now I'm going to press my reverse button and then I'm going to come forward again. And you'll find that your machine will cope much easier and better with going over that edge. So let's go down here, moving our pins, make sure your raw edges are together. I can hear the death rattle on my bobbin still. See if we make it. Just use as many pins as you need as to be comfortable. And then at the end, I'm just going to reverse stitch. Maybe that will work. Oh, still doing all right with that bobbin. So if I show you now, 
see that elastic has been caught in that side seam because what we'll eventually do is we'll eventually fold that back and it'll give us a nice transition across there onto the waistband and the elastic will get caught into the back of the trousers as we're sewing but we're not we're not on that stage yet so let's just take that back but that's that's what's going to happen with it if you've jumped ahead to see what what I was doing and how I was doing it on this side I'm going to actually start on the bottom edge because I think it'll be easier I want to have that elastic on top so I can see what's happening so let's just start with a centimeter seam allowance and reverse stitch start off with pop needle in the work so that we can see what we're doing I think Bramble's going to look really smart in his suit once this is all finished. I keep stopping for those pins. I don't sew over pins. I think it can send your machine crazy. I know some people do, don't they? But it's your choice, but I don't stop on the extra maintenance bills so we're coming up to this section here so same again so let's first i've got my all to hand so i can hold on to that overlocked edge just to make sure it stays down take it steady as you go over and now i'm going to take a few stitches into my elastic just literally one or two just to hold it steady that's it now i'm taking my pin out for my elastic and the one out for the top i'm going to go forward through the elastic and then i'm going to reverse just to hold that still Those are my bottom threads. There they are. Okay. So this is what we end up with. So from the front, we've got the front and the pleats here, and the elastic is forming that bridge across the top. The back of it is all kind of out of the way, and then we've got the front here. But if we turn this over, so we turn this around the right way, you'll see that when you pull on those sides, it's going to give you the casing for the elastic and the elastic is proud at the moment but we'll, we will be stitching this down in time and that will then hold on to the elastic for you out of the way and you'll be able to stitch around the back here and give yourself that that enclosed elastic on the back of the waistband i think now actually would be a good time just to try these on to bramble just for the waistline because i because if we, before we go too much further we can adjust anything if we need to Let's try that on there, Bramble, just for you. I'm happy with the front. That all looks nice. And if we were to pin that at the crotch point, that would be sitting nice for his trousers. I feel like he's got more room for his tummy. And on the back here, we've got a nice amount here that will be gathered. And that will be gathered in and tucked in on the back there. So there's plenty of room for his little tail, bless him plenty of room for his bottom and I know that we've not got this bit here done yet but I'm I'm happy with those so far obviously we'll have the final verdict on the final roundup and you can make your own uh, mind up then but I'm, I'm happy with the waist and the way the pleats are so I'm going to leave those in place now so then put you back there Bramble so then what we need to do now, let's go back onto the wrong side of our, inside of our trousers, is doing one side first. I'm just going to sort of tuck the elastic up so it's up towards the top of the trouser and I'm going to put a pin through along the length of the elastic to hold it up. I'm just going to go to the halfway point, just make sure that's all the elastic. You can feel with your fingers where the elastic is. So just hold that, to, just make sure you've not got any, oh, I had got a, I had got a fold in my elastic. Just make sure you've not got, a, it's not twisted at all. Because then we're going to run a row of stitching around here. And I'm probably going to use the top of my overlocking as my guide. I'm going to get to one half and then I'm going to then pull the, take the pins out, pull the elastic through to the other side and that will then give me the other half then to be able to do. I'll show you what I mean. I can just do one more pin, I think. So the so the pins are high up. Oh wait, holding on to the elastic. I think I've got enough thread. 
And to do this, you can take the um, body off your, off your machine because then you can then feed your trousers onto the edge here and that'll just make it all tie up nicely. I'm going to move my needle across to the left again so that I've got that nicely positioned. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches for, oh, I tell you what we haven't done. Sorry, hold on one second. Before we do that, I'm jumping ahead. Just expose those side seams again and just take it to your overlocker or do your zigzagging and just zigzag down the end bottom of your um, the side seams of your trousers on both sides. So be just before you start and do that elastic and then come back to this part because once we've put the elastic casing over, you're not going to be able to get to the top. So it's going to be easier to do that now. So let's just run, run away and... Um, run away let's just um, run over to the overlocker and then i'm just going to overlock these side seams okay i'm back let's just take these long bits off the overlocked seams just tidy that up okay back to where we were then so i've already so let's just fold the waistband back over again so it hides all of that and that's all nice and we want those side seams now pushing over towards the back the elastic is still pinned up in a couple of places so that's all fine so, needle up. So we're on the side seam here. I'm going to take a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. A needle in the work, so that's all stays all nice. And then we're just going to run across the top of the overlocking. Just make sure you've got your seam allowance and it's open when you come to that section. Take your time over that bulky bit. And then the next thing we're going to do is take out the pins from out of the elastic from further back. Make sure you've got your fingers out the way of your needle while you're just messing about with that bit. And then if you pull on this front bit where it's all folded over, you can pull the elastic through and then we can just pin that out of the way as well, just to make sure that that's out of the way for us. Take these pins out as we go, but just so that you can, because you can feel where the elastic is, so you can pin through it. And then we can just carry on now. Take that orange pin out, because it's just going in the way a little bit. Just reverse on the edge just here. Needle out of the work. Take off our threads. Take our pin out. And then we can see that that's it gathered the elastic and the elastic is free flowing through the channel which is what you want because you want to be able to adjust those gathers. And if we look from the inside Then we've got a nicely pleated front pair of trousers that on the back we've got those that gathered back waistband. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be doing then is working with our turn-ups, I think. I don't think we do the um, inseam first. Let me just have a quick look. No, while these are open, we're going to be working with our turn-ups. So let's get hold of those. I have cut out two of these this time and that is correct. So take our pins out and let's just put our pattern piece away. And then we've got our right and wrong side marked up already. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to fold them in half so that the wrong sides are together. So let's put the two long raw edges together. I can use that pin now because we know that that's the case. And then we're going to take this to the um, pressing mat and we're going to just press that so that that's all nicely folded and is going to keep its shape for us. Let me just do this quickly first, this other one. And you can do the same too. That's it, and then let's just get our iron board and our press cloth. In actual fact, now we've got these on here, we can actually transfer those pins just to holding that flat. I'm just going to press this folded edge. If you use a little bit of steam as well, it does help just to keep everything all nice and neatly. 
flat. Okay, they look nice and folded, don't they? Nice and flat. It's always easier to try and give them a good press now whilst they're in the flat rather than when they're actually attached because then they'll be a little more difficult just to, just to handle. And I'll put a note on the screen here as to whether or not I end up taking, thinking that my trousers are too short i am going to just take off a smidge because can you see i've got a little step between the two lengths of mine here so i'm just going to even that up with my scissors if i can find them anybody else lose everything all the time i know i do okay so let me just take half so we've got about half a centimeter haven't we that's that one it's such a small amount that it's not really going to make much difference, I don't think. I don't quite know where it's come from, but because the pattern in theory shouldn't have added any extra length when I added that extra width to it. I didn't add any extra length to it, so that was all. Once you've levelled up your seam, what you're going to do then is if you take your trousers, you're going to put the um, fold the um, open edge of your turn up. Let's find the halfway point roughly. And making sure that you've got your seam allowance point into the back. You're going to put the turn up onto the inside edge of the trousers, not the outside edge. So you've not got right sides together. You're going onto the inside of your trousers to put your, your turn up on. I'm just gonna give that one a little bit more. And now I've got extra at the other end that I can adjust for it. Seam allowance to the back. Yeah, I did the right amount of length onto that um, turn up. It's just, just enough. Might have just a, a small amount just to snip off, but not much. Okay, so there's our inside edge, um, a seam to the side seam pointing towards the, the back. And there's the raw edges of our turn up. And we're going to sew those now with a, um, one centimetre seam allowance, I think. Ah, half centimetre seam allowance, so just quarter of an inch on these. Let's put that bit back on again. My thread's still going. It just shows you, doesn't it? It does last longer than you think. So let's put my um, stitch length back down to quarter of a centimetre. Um, half centimetre, quarter of an inch. Reverse at the start and stop. just to anchor everything down so if you do have to adjust it you can do thing that you want to do then is take this over to your overlocker or your zigzag and you're going to just overlock or zigzag along that edge that you've just sewn okay because in time these are going to when we do the side seams these will fold over and be shown on the other side of the trousers okay so I've just repeated that with the other one as well and then the last thing that you want to do is just make sure that your turn ups are level with your the edge of your trousers as well so just take off I've just got a couple of little slithers that just need to come off on mine so just make sure they're they're level put those bits in the bin okay yeah looking good okay so then the next thing that we're now going to do is we are going to be folding the seam allowance up on the trousers so where are we we're on the back here so if we're going to fold the trousers over 
on that folded edge just there. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is actually understitch that so that holds it down. Yeah, that'll make it fold nicely. So let's just add an extra step. So what we're going to do now is a bit like when we're making a facing. So you see how your seam allowance is on the um, for your turn up. So we've got a turn up here. This is the inside of our trouser and we've got the overlocked seam edge here. What I'm going to do is open out the trouser and the turn up so that the seam allowance is pushed through to the back. And then what I'm going to do then is just following along we're just going to put a row of stitches that is going to attach the seam allowance onto the um, trouser on the inside because when what we want is that when we fold this over it's it's kind of feeling a bit bouncy at the moment as if it wants to fold back but if we do that under stitching it will help everything all sit nicely and make that hem go nicely so it is an extra step but I think it's going to be valuable in the end so I'm going to run my presser foot down along the um, sewn edge between the trouser leg and the turn up. I'm feeling to make sure that my seam allowance is over towards the main part of my trouser so that's all there. And I'm going to move my needle across so that I am just into the seam allowance of the, um, of the turn up so that's going to hold that down. Don't need to reverse, just going to take its time to get started. Just start with your needle in your work while you just adjust the next section. You can pin it if you want to, but if you just hold it with your fingers, you should be fine. Take your time over where it's bulky. Just make sure that when you come off again, it's all folded under. Come off the edge there. Starting and stop threads off. So what that's done at the moment is it's made it much flatter so the seam allowance is towards the back and then when we've finished our trousers off and we sew that round that's going to look all nice and neat. I think it could actually have had a bigger turn up on it actually you know. Turn up does look quite small. Depends what you like. I think if I did these again I think I might increase those those turn ups because they look a little bit small at the moment to me. We'll see when we get when we get them onto bramble. But let me go ahead and do that on the other side as well. So here's my leg, here's my turn up, and at the moment it wants to just face in towards the trouser leg. If you can see that, it just wants to fold there. But if you look at the other one where we've um, done that understitching, look how that's folding out now nicely, and you can just see the understitching here just into the trouser leg. Okay, so let's do the same thing again. So let's fold the trouser leg out. So along the leg of the trouser and that seam allowance wants to pop backwards. That's all good. And I think I've not got enough thread. Let me just go and um, do a bobbin and then I'm just going to um, top stitch that one again and then I'll meet you back here. So you do the same. OK, so I've got both both legs now neatened off like that. The next thing we're going to do then is we're going to fold that turn up just on that edge where, where the seam is. And we're just going to put a pin in place. We're going to do the same on this side as well. So on all on all four edges of this turn up to on each leg. So you're just folding up. You're not folding up so that you can see that stitching you've just done. You're folding up so that that stitching stays on the inside. So if I show you like that, that's how mine looks. So it doesn't look like that with the seam. It's just sort of we're folding it just so that you've got that small amount. I think it's only about a centimetre that's actually a centimetre and a half that's actually just going across to the other side because the first thing that I want you to do is to neaten this edge before we sew it so whether you're overlocking or you're zigzagging or you're pinking I want you to take this so this is going to be the seam that goes between the tr between the legs so you're going to um, neaten from one turn up all the way along through the crotch seam and all the way to the other side because when these are sewn together I want us to be able to fold that seam allowance out to the sides and just catch it down so that it doesn't look bulky on the inside. Those that have followed me before for making trousers is I hate it when you sew something together and then on the inside you get a really bulky seam that's just sticking out um, in the middle of in the middle of your lovely, lovely garment. 
So we're just going to take this now and just neaten these edges first before we sew them together. And the other thing I'm going to do first as well before we sew them together is press the um, turn up so that that's nice and flat too. You can do it now if you want to. Um, it just depends on which way round you like to do things. But that's the two steps that we need to do. We need to neaten that edge and we need to just press those down so that they're going to sit nice and flat once the trousers are sewn together. Okay. Okay, so there we are with the sides overlocked and I've just pressed those um, turn ups down um, I've turned them up <laughs> but I've pressed them down <laughs> if that makes sense um, and if you wanted to you could always put a little stitch just at the center seam there that'll just hold them but we'll see how they are once they're on so what we're going to do now is just fold the trousers so that they're inside out we're first of all going to go to our crotch seam and we're going to match those points up and luckily one of mine overlocked one way and one overlocked the other so make sure you get that intersection just nicely positioned there. Then we're going to go down to the bottom of one leg, get your legs together there. And that's all nicely positioned. And a couple of pins there, just holding those edges together. And just incidentally, when I overlocked, I didn't take anything off other than the little whiskers of any fraying. I, I um, didn't take off any of the seam allowance at all. I was just using it just purely for neatening. That's a pin in there, and a couple down here. So we're going down each leg. And then I think what I'm going to do is I think it's going to be easier rather than start on top of those turn ups, I'm going to start at the crotch point and go down one leg and then turn the trousers over and go down the other leg. I think that will be easier. And I think it will be less frustrating and less bulky. So let me just move my needle back across to the middle so we can get our one centimeter seam allowance. Let's just put our trousers on here so that we've got the crotch point is under my needle. Take that pin out. One centimetre is lined up. And now let's just a few stitches backwards and forwards just to anchor those threads. And now we're just going to sew through the edge. And it's not the needle struggling with the bulk at the bottom here. The needle will go through this wall really, really easily. It's just the thickness of the fabric. And we just need to give our machines the best chance possible of being able to manage all of this. So let's just keep those. So the, the transition at the bottom of the um, um, turnips is really important. So we want those to be as even as possible and then just reverse. Try not to end. I just did reverse a couple of times. Try not to end with your threads right on the edge of your trouser leg because I, I know from past experience that can just cause it to, to pop out. So there's one side done and there's a seam. And I'll show you what I mean about these in a minute and we'll tidy that up. So now I'm going to flip my trousers over so that the crotch point is at, at the centre again. Take off those starting threads, we don't need those anymore. And again there, we're just going to sew this down with our one centimetre seam allowance. Reverse again, just anchor those threads. So they're quite a nice quick pair of trousers to make actually. I mean, with all the details, they are nice. Let's just put our needle in our work before we start to mess about with these bottom bits just make sure all of those cuffs are all turned up properly okay starting threads off we don't need those so we can just switch our machine off because I think we're pretty much done. Oh no, we might just do the inside of the trousers. So let's just take these open now, round the right way. Got errant threads in a couple of places. Let me just trim those off while I see them. So Here's our pair of trousers looking all nice and smart. 
And this is the inside bit that I just want to show you. Can you see how that seam allowance is just sticking out into the centre of the leg there? I don't like that bit. So what I suggest you do is just fold that out to the side like that and just flatten it with your fingers. And then you can either do a couple of stitches with your machine or I'm just going to use a needle with the brown threader if I can find one. Okay, and then inside the leg here, as we can see, we've got that seam allowance. All I do is spread that out to the sides. I've got a needle hand sewing needle with some thread and then just behind the back of where the turn up is going to be then I just stitch this down to the fabric at the back there just to flatten it out so that it can't stick out it's quite stiff so just take your time and then I'll just travel the needle across to the other side just push down on something if you need it to go through and then just do a couple more stitches on the other side and that will just then hold that seam allowance back for you so that it's out of the way for um, when these are being worn and you won't see that seam allowance then sticking out. It's just a little pet hate of mine. If it doesn't bother you, you don't need to do this. It's just if it bothers you, same as me, but I think it does elevate the finish. So let me just show you the two. So there's the one that I've done now, but the seam allowance just pulled out flat and that's how the other one is. So it's up to you which you prefer. Anyway, so there we go. And if you wanted to, you could always put a little stitch going through your turn up just to hold it at the side, but it seems to be holding okay just there. So let me just grab Bamble and we'll um, get these trousers on him and see how he looks. Okay, so here we have our adorable Bramble. Let's pop his feet into his new trousers. There's one. Here's the other. Let's just see if we've made these more comfy for him. Yeah, you can already tell that they're so much better. His tail's in the way make sure that they're up nice on the back so even if he's standing then that's a nice length on him just there and then when he sits down they're all nice now they are riding up his legs a little bit which is what happens with trousers so for those where I've taken an inch out of the legs for the other bramble then they should still be lovely I mean they're not going to be down over his over his feet they just have a little bit more room but I'm happy with those Around his tummy, it feels like they're sitting nicely. They're not too tight either. The elastic possibly could have done with being a little bit um, tighter. Um, but in terms of the extra fabric on the back of his legs for when he sits, then there's a lot more, a lot more room there, so that he will sit straight. So that's and he doesn't look quite so hippy in these either. They're, they're sitting nicely, they're not pulling, and the pleats are sitting nicely as well. Oh, you can't see that. The pleats are sitting nicely as well on the front of those trousers. So let's just pop his waistcoat on and see how he's looking there as well. And do his buttons up, make him all smart, and then hopefully he's gonna look lovely. his trousers up under his waistcoat so yeah I think he's looking pretty good I like the pleats down the that top stitching down the trouser leg as well that we've done I think that just just carry on that pleat all the way down and just helps define that the turnips look nice they don't actually look too small I was just a bit worried they were going to look too small at one stage but they don't they look nice and the back of his trousers and the back will tuck up inside the back of his waistcoat there's enough room for that to to fit in there nicely his tail's just to one side that's kind of getting in the way a little bit but otherwise his trousers are looking really nice so that's good i'm pleased with those i think there aren't any changes that i wouldn't do or that i'd make any more um just maybe the elastic a little bit tighter that might be the only thing but I think that actually they, they fit quite nicely for getting them on and off. Okay, let me just turn the camera down, round and we'll have a round up. Okay, and so here we are with Bramble in his lovely meadow sweet suit. Still looks quite hippie on there, doesn't he? 
and hold him out so you can get a good good view of him but the, the, the trousers are skimming over that's just the way that his hips his legs are attached on but he's got a nice amount of, of movement in the back of these trousers and um, the nice length on him and as I say, those pleats aren't pulling quite as, as tight as they were. So, yeah, I'm happy with the amount of extra fabric that we added in there in order to accommodate his tummy and the way that he looks. Everything tucks in nicely. Um, and hopefully you'll agree that he looks really quite smart in his little outfit. And then when he's sitting as well, whoops, everything's just bunching up just nicely, but just looking really nice. So I hope you've enjoyed stitching with me today. Um, really like how these trousers have come together, nicely drafted, really do um, make a nice suit statement um, for the outfit for, for Bramble. Um, if you have enjoyed watching the video, I'd be really, really grateful if you would consider giving the video a thumbs up and leaving a comment because those two ways are the best way to support my channel. Um, the more interactions I get, which is either a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it um, and also a, a comment whatever you want to put just a few words um, would really really help push my video out to more people obviously if you're a, subs can't say it, a subscriber too then I'd be really grateful because I like to know that you're there and watching that's really really um, kind of you to be a subscriber um, there's no cost to you it's not a, a cost for it to be a subscriber it just means that you follow the channel and it's something that you want to see more of and hopefully you do so yeah on behalf of Bramble and I I just want to say a really big thank you to Linda Lowe again for sponsoring the video and um, for sponsoring the pattern pack and therefore sponsoring the video and on behalf of Bramble and I we're off to get a drink so um and it'll probably be hot water very exciting isn't it but um have a great day everybody thank you for watching and I'll be back soon with some more videos take care everybody happy stitching bye